DCI Andy Redwood, but now approaching five years since the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. How did the Metropolitan Police get involved? in the investigation? Well in 2011, in May, the previous Commissioner Sir Paul Stevenson made an operational decision for the Met Police to become involved. Um, once that decision had been made, um, it was then passed to myself within the Homicide and Serious Crime Command. Um, part of our terms of reference is to deal with high-risk missing persons and in addition to that we've also got experience in conducting critical incident reviews. So I'm currently leading a team of 37 police officers and police staff and we are seeking for the first time to gather together three distinct areas of material in relation to Madeleine's disappearance. So firstly it is the Portuguese law enforcement material that started obviously in 2007. Their live investigation closed in 2008 um, and, and currently as of today remains closed but nevertheless there's an awful lot of material that has been that has been gathered that we've drawn together in one place. Um, there is also the UK law enforcement material from a number of areas that we've drawn together as well as private investigators. A number of different companies have been used by the family from the outset of this. Um, and drawing all those three things together and overlaying them in one place is, is never been effectively done before. I see. So what are you doing as part of this review? I mean it sounds like a lot of work. What do you, what do, you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, on a day-to-day -day basis, what we are seeking to do is to systematically and logically work through the material, effectively page by page, um, to try and identify investigative opportunities. It's important to point out at this stage that obviously the lead agency in the disappearance is the Portuguese police. The Portuguese police are known as the Policia Judiciaria. And I have a, uh, a counterpart in Porto, North West Portugal, Portugal, who leads a review team. What we are seeking to do, working in close collaboration with them, is to work through the work through the material and try to identify investigative opportunities. Where we identify those opportunities, to ensure that we then pass them to our colleagues to complement the work that they are doing, and then working together towards a position where we would very much like the case to be reopened. Yeah, we we hope you're successful, but as as part of this review, there's a massive amount of information to get through. I mean, how are you going through this material? You, you describe this material. Can you tell me a bit more about it? Oh, yeah. Yes, I mean, we are, we're about a quarter of the way through at the moment, and I would estimate that having these three strands in one place, the estimate at the moment is that we're looking at around 40,000 different pieces to this. Somewhere in the region of 100,000 pages of material to, um, to, to, to get through, uh, I say get through, to properly analyse. Um, and, and obviously some of that material is in Portuguese, so there is a translation um, situation there as well. But so far, as I say, a quarter of it done, and within that, I think we've identified um, around 195 investigative opportunities from the historical material, and there is some other very promising new lines of inquiry, which is, which is, which is, which is very good for the future, because that hopefully will, will enable us to be able to work with the Portuguese to have the case reopened. I understand. I mean, a lot of people have been touched by the disappearance of Madeleine McCann, what, what can people do to help? I mean, tell me about, is there a new appeal being launched? Yes, I mean, the very important reason why we are speaking publicly today, and this is being done in, in full collaboration with our Portuguese colleagues, is that in addition to it being the fifth anniversary, um, Madeleine McCann would be nine years old on the 12th of May uh, 2012. On the evidence that we've reviewed to date, we believe that there is a possibility that she's alive. When we started this investigative review, we had two clear, two clear areas that we focused on. One was that Madeleine is alive, and the second is that sadly she's not. And I say in the former of those that she's alive, um, and on the basis of the, of the evidence and material that we've reviewed, and that possibility being very clear, we have sought the services of, a, of, a, of an accredited UK forensic expert in age progression imagery. She has worked very closely with the family to produce the image of Madeline as we think she would look at nine years old. So the appeal today is, is clear. I would like the public to look carefully at this image and if they believe they know where Madeline McCann is 
or if they have information or evidence that directly helps us to understand what happened to her, then I would ask them to contact us today. And the second part to our appeal today is that we are still seeking to try and populate the area of Prada Luz between the 28th of April 2007 and the 3rd of May 2007. We know that in Prada Luz there is a large United Kingdom population there, both of permanent um, people that live in the resort but also holiday makers so if you were there in that area at those times and if in particular if you were around the Mark Warner facilities within the Ocean Club and you haven't been spoken to by either Portuguese police or the UK law enforcement i.e. the police then we would urge you to make contact with us